Hey everyone, in today's video, we're gonna go through all of the different patching points, talk about what they do, and some, maybe some possible ideas for how to use them. In the next few videos, I'm gonna really dig into some different patching ideas and give sound examples as well. So I think it makes sense to kind of watch this one so you're aware of all of our options. And then in the next few videos, you'll kind of see how they're used. So, so there's 32 patch points, just like the other instruments in the sound studio. There's 20 inputs, which is the white text on black, so not outlined. And there's 12 outputs, which is the black text on the white. So let's go through row by row. So the first one, you see VCO, one volt per octave. Now, of course, the one volt per octave standard is how we modulate or how we control our VCO frequency. It's summed, it's added to the frequency of the knob. So you're gonna to wanna to tune it here. And then if you wanna control this, say through a sequencer or something like that, you can plug in right there. And it accepts negative five to five volts. So it, it can run in a whole 10 uh, octave range. Right here, we have the mod VCO free, uh, sync. So when you have sync on an oscillator, what it's actually doing is resetting the, the phase of the wave uh, whenever a pulse goes in. So uh, it, can, it can make it so that the tuning kind of stays the same and in sync, it's very similar to FM. It creates, uh, it distorts the wave a little bit. Um, so we'll talk about that later. Right next to it, you can also control the mod VCO with the one volt per octave standard. So again, you would set the tuning and then you can control it right here. Now, again, remember the mod VCO gets out of audio range if it's in the uh, counterclockwise range and it only goes up to, as it says right here, about 1.3 kilohertz. So it doesn't get very extremely high, but since this is summed, you could make it go higher into the audio range with this patch input. Lastly, at the top, we have our VCA output. This is where you're gonna plug, I frequently will plug it right straight into my mixer and control the gain through my mixer right here rather than plugging in through the back. Certainly if I have this rack mounted, that's how I'm gonna get sound out of the labyrinth. Sometimes when it's not rack mounted, I might just use a typical cable in the back, but that's what the VCA output does. In the second row, this first input is the blend knob. So we can control that uh, through CV. We can hook up an LFO or something to make this blend knob move on its own and get some interesting results. The next three are outputs. We have the mod VCO output. So if when we're hooked up to a larger Euro rack setting or something like that, and we want to process the signal coming out of the mod output, we can go through here. Also, I'm going to use it in the next video as an LFO. So if we want to turn this frequency all the way down, we can use it as an LFO. That's a, a good patching point um, for some modulation if you are self patching the labyrinth. We have our noise output, which I, I mean, it could be used for um, creating some modulation, some really fuzzy modulation, or you can just pull it out for use in other ways if you wanna bypass the, the, the other aspects of the labyrinth and just have it be a noise generator, you can pull the noise out right there. Now right here, if we wanna pull the audio, see one of the great things about modular systems is that you, you can kind of change the routing. Now, if you wanna pull the audio out right here, in the first video, I talked about signal flow, and so it goes through the mixer, and then it goes through our wave processors and colorizers. Well, say if you wanted to pull all of those signals out before they go into the colorizers, you would go through the mixer output right here, you know, and if you were to say, send it to a different signal processor outside of the labyrinth. As we go down to row three, we have our wave folder input. And what we can use there is if you would, if you would like to use this particular module to wave fold um, a different sound, like in one of the upcoming videos, 
I might try plugging in maybe a signal from the mother into the wave folder, we would plug right into there. And then we can use this wave folder with more signals than just the labyrinth. In the next one fold, we can control this knob through CV. So that's great. As I uh, demonstrated in the last video with the sequencer, I think the fold sounds really good when it has a smooth voltage. So we could plug an LFO or something in there to get, get this knob moving steadily and create that cool waveform sound, uh, wave folding sound. Right here, we have the wave folder VCA. Now, you remember when I went over the envelope section, see, this is where it's all coming together. In the envelopes video, I talked about how envelope generator two controls the VCA decay. So with nothing plugged in here, this is normal to that input path. And as we, if you plug something in here, it breaks that normalization. So, um, you know, that's, that's good to know. You can change how the VCA is controlled for the wave folder through this patch. Envelope generator one right here on the outside. This is an output. This will give you like a trigger signal with the decay uh, how, at this setting, whichever you, whatever you set it at. So you can use that to modulate different things. If you remember these two knobs, um, the envelope one it goes for both the fold and the cutoff. So the same effect that you would get by having turning this up and having the envelope uh, modulate these knobs, if you were to take the output of that and say, put it into the blend, that would give the same effect, but for the blend parameter. So in the next row, similarly to how the wave folder can, you can access that through these knobs, you can do the same thing with the filter, you can go directly into the filter and bypass the internal routing. Uh, you can control and modulate the cutoff frequency. And then of course you can patch the, or modulate the VCA of the filter, just like you could do the wave folder. And then here, similarly to the one above, you can access the, the signal that's generated by the envelopes for envelope two through this patch point and use it to modulate other things. Okay, in this lot, this next row was something I haven't talked about yet, so we'll include it here, is this uh, utility mixer, the U-Mix one level. Uh, with nothing patched in here, this doesn't really do anything. So um, it doesn't change any sounds on the labyrinth or anything. It's just, I'm guessing that they just had extra space, so they said, hey, why not include a mixer? So you have this utility mixer. Um, you can go ahead and plug audio or CV signals directly into it. Now, if you don't plug anything to number one, you can see in parentheses it says ring mod. The ring mod is normal to this. So with nothing plugged in there, that's what you're gonna get all the way counterclockwise. If you plug something in there, it'll break that, that normalization. And then you can plug anything you want to Umix 2. There's nothing normal to it, so without anything plugged in there, it's just blank. But uh, yeah, so then you can use this almost like a crossfader mixer um, to go between whatever you plug in here and whatever you plug in here. And then the output is right here. And then here on the end, you can trigger envelope two by plugging in a trigger or a gate or something into this input. Okay, down at the bottom, we have some things for controlling our sequencer. The clock one input, this is the input for sequencer one. This is the, the internal clock set by. So this does basically whatever, whatever you set this tempo to, it's the, that's normal to this input. So if you stick something in here, it's gonna break that normalization. So this won't do anything. But, uh, but then you can control your clock here so you can sync it up with other, uh, with other modules or other synths. Bit flip one obviously flips the bit of sequencer one just like pressing this button. Sequencer one CV is used if you say wanna pull this CV out, you know, maybe modulate a different synth or something like that. 
um, you can pull that CV uh, data from the sequencer one right here. And then the triggers for sequencer one, you can pull out right here. Now in the next, in the next patch, we have clock two. Now what's interesting about this is that you can actually operate these two sequencers at different rates, which is very cool. So without anything plugged in there, they match up to the tempo knob or whatever's coming in to clock one. But with something plugged in there, you can have these going at different rates, which I'm going to explore in upcoming videos. Bit flip two, it does the same thing as bit flip one. It just flips a bit. You can take the sequencer CV or yeah, you can take the sequencer CV out of sequencer two right here and the triggers from sequencer two right here. You have a MIDI input. Again, I don't generally use MIDI. Uh, the MIDI on this is pretty simple. I think that it only really controls the uh, transport functions and clock. Um, I don't think that you can control the uh, frequency or anything like that through MIDI. So it's a pretty basic um, MIDI function. I'm guessing if you just want to connect it to your DAW or something like that. We have a trigger input. Does the same thing as that button. Reset, resets everything back to the beginning. And as I mentioned in the last video, you can change how that interacts in the global settings menu um, to reset the buffer as well, if you'd prefer to do that. And then finally, we have our clock output. So if you're wanting to control other and have this be the master clock or have it, you know, kind of be a through clock to other synths, you can control the output clock right there. All right, that is the entire patch bay section. In the next three videos, I'm gonna break it down into three videos. I'm gonna talk about some self patching that we can do with the labyrinth to kind of get our creative juices flowing. Just a few ideas. And then following that, I'll do a video where I integrate some of the sound studio synths and talk about some different patch points and ideas for that. And then in the last video, I'll bring in some Eurorack modules so you can see how this could be patched within a larger system. So, all right, that's it for today. Check out Patreon, check out my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next videos.